where you guys live, but a facility that's close to home, you know, and to have everything all in one, how important is that to you guys? Well, to me, this is actually like right down the street from my house. I'm happy for that one, too, yeah. But yeah, this facility, I live like um, probably five minutes away from here. So knowing that during the off season or when I need to, you know, get closer to weight or just somewhere to work out and it's right here, that's, that's a lot better for me. Does it put a lot of pressure on you guys? Because I know that you guys have peers that are participating in specialized training. Right, everybody's got somebody or multiple people on their team that are going to a facility like this, or you know, have, have some type of extra training that they're doing in addition, in addition to your team workouts. So, do you guys feel pressure in order to keep up with the competition to find a place like this to continue to raise your game up? I feel like it helps a lot. I know some of my teammates are like, "Oh, I have this personal trainer. I do this," and I'm sitting here like. Yep, I need I need to do something else. I need I need to keep up with them. I need to be getting better. So yeah, um, I've got a couple friends that go to personal trainers and stuff, um, but they don't have the thing that we have now, where we have every day they want. Um, I've always had um, the push-up sit-ups and stuff in my house, and I've gotten to feel and I've got a weight room. We we have all all this in one now, which is amazing, which makes it a lot better. How about you? You live close to uh, your school, Arvada. Arvada. You do uh, any training out there, or how does that work for you? No, so uh, I live in Westminster. Okay. Arvada West ain't my uh, home school, okay. but um, it, it sucks because I don't go to a place like this. I don't. I only go to you know my school to get to working. But uh, a lot of my teammates they go to places that they get hands-on training. So um, I just like. Um, I just like found that out junior year that we could go to places like this because I'm fairly new to like uh, all these like uh, personal trainers. Yeah. So I'm the one that's getting like uh, I didn't know about this. So everything so. before was just raw talent and just going along with what coaches were telling you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so have you since you started personal training? Have you seen differences in your game? Have you seen improvements? Um, all you. This is the question for all you guys. What's what's the difference between when you were doing personal training and when you're not, as far as your production in your sport? I think uh, you just get more, you get more reps in because it's just you and your trainer. So um, like, for example, with your coaches, there's other teammates, your teammates are there. So you don't get as much reps as you will with by yourself with a personal trainer. Yeah, that, so I think that's a big factor. That attention, right? Yeah. What about you, Jason? Um, um, I asked, have you seen a difference between, well, have you done personal training? Have you done anything? Not, no. Other than my dad, no. Oh, well, that's enough. Yeah, you know, for me, of, yeah. A lot of kids don't even have that. So, right. um, what's the difference between when you're working with your dad versus when you're at school practice and you're just amongst your team and, you know, coach is just like, do this, do this, do this. And then versus when you're with your dad, he can focus in on little things that he sees. What, what difference has that made in your production on the field? Um, I feel like I've gotten a lot better. Uh, my dad's always, he's, he's the one that's gotten me to the more place I am now. So uh, he's gotten me, I've worked all this, and then I get to one of my coaches now. I got, I mean, I got one of the best co coaching staffs in the, in the state. So they, I mean, it's just, it's just all of them combined into one that's making me even better now. So I feel like it's a game of production. How about you? I don't know how it works for, uh, for wrestling, but you do uh, any personal training for that, or how does that work? That's what we, do. we got to first of all talk about the pressure that's on the two of you, considering that your dad is sitting right there and your the wrestling coach yeah. standing right there. So <laughs> you may or may not say everything that is. What? Go ahead. I, I, I'll leave that. Personal training. I have so one of my wrestling coaches have given me a mat to work with at home. So I can shadow wrestle. I wrestle my siblings here and there, but it's a lot easier for me to be at a wrestling practice with my coaches and with my teammates and just get different feels with different people because not wrestling's not the same with every person. It's different. Everyone does things differently. So to me, I like having different experiences and seeing different styles of wrestling. Okay. Okay. Um. As you guys see, we got a, our, a new guest, 
Uh, Taylor, uh, so when I when we walked in, you guys see the vending machine. We're gonna jump around a little bit. Uh, you guys all have good answers, I like that. Uh, and I would say just keep going with the, the personal training because it's really important at higher levels. Everyone has someone, someone else besides coach telling them, you know, when you go study film, that's someone else that's probably not coachable. That's someone else that has a different perspective. So it's always good to have a different perspective. But like I was saying, um, Taylor's joining us and he has a lot of uh, knowledge about you know entrepreneurship and just being your, your own man, your own woman. So I want to know some of the plans you guys have beyond sports. Um, Taylor, you can chime in a little bit. And, and before we start that, I just want to uh, finish this question because I, I actually had a question off of the question that you asked a little bit earlier. Yeah, pull well, that mic close to you, Taylor. Okay, so I actually just wanted to ask a question off of the question. Uh, so we were talking about personal trainers and stuff like that. You guys are saying that you haven't been with a personal trainer in um, specifically just a one-on-one -on -one setting, but have you guys felt like things like 707 tournaments or do you do uh, extracurricular activities with other trainers afterwards or other sports? Do you think that it um, fully encompasses who you are as an athlete and improves your play on and off the field? Um, or do you think that it's just like more regular, it, it, it's more of what you're doing just at your schools or uh, just regularly at home or get your push-ups and sit-ups? Well, for me, like, outside of just my high school wrestling season, I joined freestyle wrestling, which is Coach Josh, he's my coach for that, and that helped me a lot. And I do shot put with Coach Galen, and that helps me be more explosive, and a lot of power comes out of that. So it's those little things that helps me progress in both football and wrestling because I pick up little things here and there that helps me. All right, can I stay with you for a second? Because our, you, you kind of touched on just the multi-sport element of things, right? So football, wrestling, shot put, what else did you say? Freestyle, freestyle wrestling, wrestling, right? What's, Josh, what's the difference between freestyle and? It's what the world does, baby. <laughs> you gotta know. It's what the world Stephania, the the multi sport, right? Um, as a coach, I believe it's important, right? A couple things about it. One, it keeps you engaged, right? It keeps things interesting. It mixes it up. You're also working different muscle groups, different skill sets, those kind of things. But also, you're having fun in, in high school. Right, yeah. you, you're being with your peer groups. You have multiple peer groups within different types of sports. So I, I would continue to encourage you to do that. And it sounds like it's helping you wherever you decide that you're going to land. Right, yeah. it's helping you be a better athlete for when that time comes. But for right now, can you help us um, understand a little bit more why that's important to you, whether or not you enjoy it, and, and the reasons that you do? I, I, I laid out the reasons that. Yeah. Why I like that you do it, but why is that important to you? It's important to me because I see a lot of my friends and a lot of my teammates. It's like, oh, football season's over. I'm gonna go play the video game all off season. I'm not gonna get up. Not. I have something to do. I can say, okay, well, this sport's gonna make me better at this. I'll be more explosive. This sport's gonna help me with speed. This is gonna help me be more aggressive. It just keeps me going. It's not. Like, I don't really have an off season. I always have something to do. I'm always getting better. Jeff? Yeah, um, I don't really have an off season either. Um, I'm either at the field working out or I'm always just trying to perfect my game of football and stuff like that. Uh, like with, with, uh, Coach Tyler said, he, with the 7-on-7, seven seven, um, that's, that's how my game as a quarterback uh, just a little bit better because I'm able to do my defenses more. I'm just seeing a lot, a lot of different a lot more talent, especially from different states that we play, um, which is helping me perfect my game more when I get to the actual actual season in the fall. I know you guys want to touch on entrepreneurship. I know that's why you're sitting there and we'll get to that. But yeah, I just think this is important for, for kids to hear and also express their own point of view. Like you can hear my point of view, but it honestly doesn't matter for you, right? But you guys, mm -hmm. right? It's important to hear from your peers why that's important. So uh, Ian, do you play any other sports or, you, or is it just football for you? <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry if you said that before. I have to. It's okay. I'm sorry. No, so uh, um, I run track. Yeah. I only practice 
I didn't get to go in, into any meets, okay. unfortunately. And after, uh, it might not look like if uh, I played volleyball too for Westminster High School. Yeah, let's so go. After football, I go to uh, volleyball. Yeah, that's why you receive you up and get those. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's important to compete still, right? Yeah. And sometimes you can go into your, your your trainer, right? And they have to manufacture competition for you. But when you go play basketball, there's no doubt about it, right? You gotta compete against another school and they're keeping score, right? right? Or when you're going to throw the shot first, right? There, there's no doubt about the competition. So I, I think it's all that's also another added benefit of, of playing multiple sports is being able to compete consistently year round, right? That continues to sharpen you in terms of just adjusting competitive, right? It's important. Uh, I'll just be personal for me. Um, growing up, it's, it's, in high school, there's so many different crowds that you get lost in. So for me, always playing a sport, that kept me just, that just kept my head on straight, you know, that kept me from swaying here and there. So you guys think that that does anything for you guys too, in that sense or no? Oh yeah, definitely, because um, there's a lot of like, how should I put it? There's a lot of bad influences in, yeah, in high school, you know? That's why I'm so thankful that we have sports because we don't have to like be in that, do that bad stuff. We have, we're occupied by our sports, trying to get better, instead of just being lazy and doing bad stuff like, you know, drugs and all that, you know, yeah. All right, go to your entrepreneur game model. Oh, yeah, so. <laughs> I was just I was just wondering um, what you guys' plans are when you're done with your sport or you're done. You don't you don't necessarily have to be done with your sport. I think uh, when I was coming up, they always told me basketball has to stop. Basketball doesn't have to stop. It might have to stop from playing, but it doesn't have to stop for you. So, what are your what are your plans when you're done competing with your sport? And to be honest, I'm still trying to figure it out what I want to do after just everything, you know? Um, like I said, I want to go into business. I want to major into business. But at the same time, I've been studying uh, real estate. And it's just all over the place. Nice. So I'm still trying to figure out myself and figure out what I want to do for life, you know? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Do you plan on going to college after? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Oh, okay. Uh, I actually, I don't know if you guys covered this or not, but have you guys had any uh, scholarship opportunities or coaches that have been looking at you guys for specifically your talents and skills or your sport of choice? Uh, I've had a little bit. Uh, not, not as much that uh, I'm planning on at the, uh, the end of the season, but I've had, I've had a couple coaches contact me and stuff like that. Uh, but, but yeah. And then when they have contacted you, have you looked into the program that they offer at the school? Into the school, uh, like, Education style, not as much as I probably should, um, but I've looked into the athletic type um, into that focus. So. What about you guys? Yeah, so I've had very little uh, recruiting, no, no offers. Uh, I've only talked to two schools, but it's not anything major. It's mm -hmm. just hey, you know, we're just looking at you, nothing major. And like what he said, um, I did look into the educational. Uh, I saw that they both have um, real estate that could go to school and study it, so. So it's added bonus, because yeah. it's like one of your interests. Yeah. Okay, what about you? Um, I haven't really had any offers. I've had a few coaches reach out to me. Going to camps really helps. And like Fargo, a few colleges, they've given me numbers and they talk to me here and there to keep up with my grades, but not, not really any offers. Okay, have you looked at the schools that you talk to the coaches? Yeah, I have. Um, there's a couple of them. They, I'm more leaning towards like graphic arts, photography, so these are the schools. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm really asking you guys this because that's going to be what you're doing the majority of the time while you're actually at school. So everybody they go to school for this or that, they go for football or for wrestling or track and field or whatever their sport of choice is. But when they get there, they usually don't have a plan of what they actually want to major in or be specialized, credentialized in. Uh, and I think that's one of the biggest things that you should look into when deciding schools. And that's gonna be one of the biggest things that uh, I got advice for. So if if you really don't know what you wanna do, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to exactly decide exactly what you wanna do today. 
but at the same time, you need to have an idea of what your interests are. I'll just, I'll just finish off with this. Uh, I, want, I, want, I just want to say, when you guys do get the chance to go to school, don't just take whatever the coach is telling you to take. Like, they're going to say, you don't have time to do this, you don't have time to do that. So you need to take this major that has less work. Then, when you're done with school, that coach might be, depending on who he is, he might be nowhere to be found. And you're stuck with this major that you didn't really care about. So don't take, don't take the easy road, okay? The obstacle is the way. That's what one of my coaches told me when I was a junior college. The obstacle is the way. So study something that you actually care about, that you actually want to go into after school. Don't just do it just because you want more time to focus on your sport, okay?